How's it going there guys? In this video we're going to be taking a look at this nifty little box right here, the SV Bonnie SV241. It's a power and USB distribution box which deals with also data on some of the ports, straight up power on some of the USB ports if you're using things like USB powered dew heaters etc. And then it's got a monstrous 6 12 volt DC outputs as well. This should offer over voltage, over current and electrostatic discharge protection all built in. Which is rather nice, I think, especially given the uh, kind of price range of gear that we're typically dealing with in astrophotography. It's, it's not really cheap stuff, is it? So um, anything that can protect your gear is a good thing in my books. It's coming in at a very competitive price. It's available just about everywhere. Um, you can get this from astro retailers all over the world. You can even pick them up on Amazon. A little plug there if you want to check the affiliate links down below and <laughs> wouldn't mind supporting my channel uh me and my family would very much appreciate that so thank you in advance to anybody who does that but in all seriousness i have put this thing through its paces i've um i've done some power testing basically to see what the drop off is like versus a straight through cabling system and then i've also performed some brief usb transfer testing too you know to figure out if we're going to lose anything by uh, you know running through a hub rather than again just going uh, straight to source as such i will let you know straight ahead of time it does perform well and as advertised so if you want to click off the video right now that's absolutely fine but if not i'm going to get straight into the test for you now so i'm just going to give you a very quick unbox right here you can see uh, the overall build quality of the device is very good the ports are correctly aligned in the body and uh, nothing is really out of place in terms of included accessories it comes with a 5.5 by 2.5 power cable which is very important to remember a 2.1 won't work on this thing you physically won't be able to insert that cable it does come with two 5.5 uh, by 2.1 male to male cables and also a data cable for you to use too all pretty standard stuff you've probably got a million of these lying around but now you have some more um, I did also decide to take it apart and have a look at the internals uh, just to see how things were lined up how the traces looked on the board etc and I'm happy to report that you know overall in terms of build quality of the casing perfect it's got a reinforced base so there's no real trouble um, if you use a screw that's too long at some point and try to tighten it down you're not going to punch through and damage the PCB or anything like that uh, and the board itself was really neatly laid out and everything was aligned up correctly. So, uh, yeah, well done overall on the build quality on this thing. I was impressed. Now, in order to test the capabilities of the SV Bonnie for its power output in particular on this test, I've decided to establish a baseline of what is possible with just pretty much straight through cabling. So we've got a regulated DC power supply right here, which is currently loaded with 24 watts of output, I've chosen about that wattage as that does represent pretty much what I'd often be using on a given night with one of my rigs outside that I choose to power with this kind of thing. So, uh, you know, something like the, the 55 mil with the 2600 air attached and a few dew heaters, etc. It uses about that much all night long when tracking on an AM5. Now, as I said, I've just achieved this with two dew heaters there, only there to apply load across the circuit and basically tell us what the difference is between straight through wiring and then passing through extra circuitry too. Is this going to sap any more power? Are we going to end up with a lower end voltage? Well, the way to tell is by running this ASI air. This is only here to actively track the input voltage you can see that's reaching that ASA air that's being fed by another one of those spurs from that one into four connector. So as you can see, we're maintaining this 24 watts right here and the input voltage is 12.7, 12.8 while loaded. Now, if I just basically keep that on for you a moment, I will now unplug both dew heaters, give you an idea of what changes. So now we've got very minimal loading, just the ASA air is being powered. You see we're using basically two watts to power the ASI air and now the input voltage is up to 13.1 so while it, it, it can go above 12 it shouldn't drop below 12 at this point but further down the line with further loading it is possible to drop things below 12 even with a regulated power supply that is our baseline we can see with straight through wiring we're seeing about 12.7 12.8 voltage let's hook this thing up next 
and power everything through that and see what we get. All right, so we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off right now. And you can see the SV Bonnie is connected, not yet to the geo heaters, but the tailings are in place. The only active port right now is port three on the side, and that's just powering the ASI Air Plus. Now, previously we were using two watts to power the ASI Air Plus with no load, and now we are consuming three. So I don't know if these, this is accurate enough to tell, but it is showing a difference. I am assuming potentially the SV Bonnie and its circuitry is using one watt, but the input voltage has not changed at all. So now when we apply load across the circuit, previously I think we had 12.7 volts after loading. So that's one in, apologies for the camera work. And now that's two connectors in, these dew heaters are now powered and heating. Let's just check what we're getting. So now we're seeing indeed slightly higher output wattage. So the SV Bonnie is consuming a very small amount of power, uh, currently using 26 watts now, all in. And we've reached 12.9 volts input voltage. So we're actually seeing a higher input voltage after passing through the SV Bonnie rather than passing through the, uh, the now defunct four into uh, one or rather one into four tailing right there which potentially could mean that this has uh, you know less resistance across its circuits which would not surprise me at all <laughs> to be honest uh, but it is clearly using something just a very small amount of power overall but the amount of voltage that's reaching the ASI air again as I said even after some time there so uh, these can consume a little bit more power once they're hot and they are indeed hot now. Um, it's being maintained, 12.9. So I think it's pretty safe to say that it, the SV Bonnie uses a tiny amount of power, uh, but doesn't negatively affect your, uh, your system really in any way whatsoever and might actually be a bit of a positive looking at that slightly increased input voltage uh, under load. Interesting. All right, so next up in testing, I'm gonna to try to establish a baseline for file transfer speed using a particular USB on the front of my PC. So currently I've got a memory card plugged into a memory card adapter, which is USB in itself, just into the front port on my PC. And I'm gonna copy across a 1.2-ish gigabyte folder made up of various individual files, as I think that's probably a decent test. So I'm gonna start that copying off, and as you can see, we're achieving about 45.4, 45 45-ish megabytes per second, some small drops, and then it rises back up. This is pretty typical, and about what you can expect. So it'd be interesting to see now, I'll just stop that before we finish, and uh, see what the SV Bonnie does in the same scenario using that same port. Okay, so we're hooked up now to the SV Bonnie, just uh, if I can try to show you this for a moment, kind of running through um, this little dongle right here, same USB uh, port on my PC as before, same file that we're gonna transfer. Uh, I will note, however, that you'll, uh, you'll probably have noticed that there's two cables going into the SV Bonnie. I tried without supplemental power and it will not act as an unpowered USB hub. It needs um, basically DC voltage going through it in order to work, so. Let's go ahead now and try that file transfer and you can see nothing's lost so uh, as you would have expected most likely but it's always good to test uh, you're not really going to lose any speed at least at these kind of uh, really rather pedestrian transfer speeds it won't be a problem so uh, I just thought it was worth a little look anyway but at least we do now know that you definitely need power to do this thing it can't be used uh, in an unpowered state. Well then, I hope you've enjoyed that video, guys. Um, it was an interesting device to take a look at. I will absolutely be putting this on one of my rigs. I might actually think about getting some more as well. Um, I certainly think it's worth the money. Do you know what I mean? It's not overpriced or anything like that. And the protection that it offers, that's really valuable to me. As uh, you know, just one equipment failure would you know, outweigh the cost of actually preparing properly and getting something like this protect your gear that little bit better so uh, that's something that's really kind of sticking in my mind at this point i've never really been worried too much before maybe i've just been lucky uh, i don't know but yeah 
since seeing what this can offer, I think it is a good device and uh, I'm happy to go ahead and just recommend it right now. I think it seems to be performing as advertised, which is all you can, all you can want, I would say. It's a pretty simple thing, so it's, it's good that it does what it says on the box. Anyhow, hope you've enjoyed that. Um, looking forward to seeing you in a future video, guys. Thank you so much for your support in all the ways that you give it my word hand on heart i truly truly mean it so thank you and uh, i will see you in a future video till then clear skies